Are you swallowing the big lie that cookbooks and food TV are telling you? Or can you just chew that up and spit it out with the truth when you need to? It's what we'll be talking about today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. We are live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. If this shocks you, then you should go to webcookingclasses.com slash live and register for my alert system because again we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern from here in downtown beautiful downtown Baltimore Maryland uh, the home of Johns Hopkins Hospital and Med School uh, Baltimore Maryland uh, the home of the Peabody Institute of the Arts uh, the home of the first U.S. post office ever, the first dental school. Uh, Baltimore is the largest independent city in the U.S., not part of another county. Uh, the first monument dedicated to George Washington, right down the street behind me, Fort McHenry, uh, the home of Babe Ruth, Edgar Allan Poe, Frank Zappa, uh, Michael Phelps, Pam Shriver, uh, Cal Ripken, Tupac Shakur, Thurgood Marshall, Reginald Lewis, Billy Holiday, Cab Cal Away, home of the Star Spangled Banner and the shipbuilders of Fells Point and the people who really gave independence to the United States. I wasn't born here, but it's my hometown. We're live from downtown Baltimore, Maryland, because we're the carefree cooks, right? We create our own recipes. Uh, we bring our family and friends together when it smells that good. <laughs> uh, we learn every time we cook. An important distinction we're going to talk about today, we define our own cooking styles. We practice pro methods, and we love our cooking. That's what makes us carefree cooks. I'm so glad that we're back together again today. Everyone is with us. Welcome, Joseph and Vania, and Marla is here, and John, and Mary, and Sandra, and Bob, and Dan. And, oh my goodness, too many to scroll, but welcome everyone. I love seeing your names every Tuesday. I love seeing all our friends and our carefree cooking family from all over the world. We're all working toward improving our lives and our lifestyles through better food and cooking. And the journey is fun, right? Uh, before we go any further, I've got a what am I for you today. There it is. Uh, this what am I is something that is magnified 90 times. Okay, so... This picture is magnified 90 times. In the comment section below, tell me what you think the what am I is for today, even though it has been magnified 90 times. Look, what I came to talk to you about today, there's a big lie that, that's been going around, and I've, I've got to put an end to it today because something happened to me, and I, I just immediately knew that I had to share it with you. Uh, I was watching the food TV this weekend. I, I normally don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I normally don't watch the food TV. I, I don't watch much of it because so much of it is a competition. And that hurts my heart. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't think cooking should be a competition. I don't think people should be eliminated from the kitchen. <laughs> I don't think the kitchen should be a pressure cooker. Right? It's always described as we're going to put them in the pressure cooker. I don't think people should cry in the kitchen. It's a joyous place, but ironically, the food TV can be really mean when it comes to cooking. And that seems strange. And the food TV, it can be really wrong about cooking as well. And I saw one of these examples just two days ago. I, they're continuing with this one big lie. I thought maybe they had given it up years ago because I haven't really watched it in years, but they love this one lie so much, this food TV, that it's on every one of their shows. 
And no matter if it's what we call the old-fashioned stand and stir, where somebody just sits there and talks and cooks something, if it's America's best cooks or America's worst cooks or uh, ch chop or slice or iron kitchen or cooking with somebody I never ever heard of and they just got a show last week, <laughs> no matter who it is, they're all falling into place. They are all giving you this big lie. But I'm not going to do it. I am not going to give you the same lie that they do. And do you, do you know? You know whose fault it is? This big lie that's being dished out? You know whose fault it is? It's Valerie Bertinelli. <laughs> that's who it is. It's Valerie's fault. She's the one that has set me off today. All right, I'm only kidding. <laughs> it's not really Valerie's fault. I love Valerie Bertinelli. Trust me, I, I'm not here to pick on Valerie Bertinelli. I just happen to catch her show, right? Uh, she's a gem. I mean, uh, again, I love Valerie. And when I was about 16 years old, oh, I, I, when I was about 16 years old, I really loved Valerie Bertinelli. All right? But that's, that's not what we're here to talk about. Valerie is so cool. Valerie Bertinelli, she's so much fun, right? And she was married to Eddie Van Halen. How cool is that, right? Who had the better hair? I mean, it's a toss-up, right? We could debate it for hours. Was it Val or Eddie? I don't know. <laughs> I love Eddie's hair. But anyway, I digress. I love Valerie Bertinelli. She's a national gem, okay? But I'm flipping the channels this weekend, and I come across Valerie's cooking show. And again, let me say I love Valerie Bertinelli, and none of this is her fault. And she's making a ribeye steak, a, a espresso crusted ribeye steak. Sounds great with risole potatoes. And risole potatoes are these whole white potatoes. They're usually steamed, simmered, or poached. And then you saute them in butter with fresh herbs. They're really cool. But Va Valerie used half a stick of butter. But I'm not getting on that soapbox today. All right, so let me move on. This is what I saw her do, and this is what I see so many other food entertainment shows do. They fake it for the camera. It, and it's not Valerie's fault. Again, it, it, all this is done in editing afterward. And this is what the TV producers are making poor Valerie do. Again, I love Valerie. But so she goes about making this espresso rub ribeye, and she said she was going to heat up her cast iron skillet in a 450 degree oven, 232 degrees Celsius. So she takes this brand new cast iron skillet, probably from the sponsor, she puts it in the oven, goes about her day. She goes back stirring the potatoes, talks a little more. Did I mention she used half a stick of butter on like 10 potatoes? Nonetheless, I wasn't going to go there, I said. Then she comes back to the pan after chatting a little bit to get the pan out of the oven. She takes the pan out of the oven and she pours olive oil into it and nothing. Absolutely nothing happens. The oil should have smoked immediately, but you know what? That doesn't look good for the camera. Right? Smoking pans don't look good for the camera. So she went ahead and she put this cold steak in the cold pan and at first no reaction whatsoever. And then boom, edit, and suddenly the pan is splattering and the steak is sizzling. Not because of the heat in the pan, but because of the good video editor. You know, probably from a safety standpoint, we, we can't have it splattering, so we take a close-up picture later. But here's my beef. <laughs> here's my beef with this problem. If the show were education, Right? They, they, they pretend like they're teaching you to cook. If they were education instead of entertainment, they would let Valerie discuss what to do if your pan isn't ready yet. Let, it, let her have at it, right? She's in her ninth season of this show. I, I think Valerie cooks well. I think she knows how to cook. That's not my point with Valerie today. My point is with the food TV, right? So they can show, they can have Valerie talk about how to recover from, from something that didn't come out perfectly. She expected it to go one way, but it went another way. Teach us, Valerie, teach us food TV. Show us what goes wrong. But you know what? Everything does come out perfectly on TV. It always does. The host always tastes the food at the end and, mm, oh, it's always perfect. Of course it is. The meal is perfectly timed. Everything comes out perfectly. Everything is perfect. And it's like a 70s sitcom.
It all works out in the end. Schneider comes and fixes the faucet. Don't worry. Everything will be perfect. And that's the big lie that they're telling you. They're telling you that everything comes out perfect in the end. Everything in the food magazines, every photo in every cookbook, every food TV host is just absolutely perfect. But I'm going to confess to you today, and I think you're going to join me, I'm not. I'm not perfect. And my cooking rarely is, okay? I've been studying cooking for 20 years like nobody else, and I still don't think my cooking is perfect, and I trust that you don't think you're perfect either. What goes on in our kitchens doesn't have to be perfect. That's my message today. And if your appearance expectations are coming from a fashion magazine and your cooking expectations are coming from a TV show, you're always going to be disappointed. It's unfair. They're editing out the non-perfect parts. It's not real. But look, here's my message. When you find true joy in cooking, when you love the process like us carefree cooks do, when you have fun putting together some kind of new inspiration, something you just thought of or just something that you learned and, and you're working on it, you're learning, you're on a journey, you're progressing, does it have to be perfect? No. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you've heard me say it a thousand times. If it's good to you, then it's good. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. If Sally sends me an email with a picture of how she's using our basic cooking methods, she's whipped up an original meal from her heart with the ingredients that she loves, how could it ever be wrong? If it's Sally's original dish, you can't tell Sally she's wrong. It's her art. It's her interpretation. If Sally makes uh, Sally's seafood stroganoff, who's to say when it's perfect and when it's not? Nobody but Sally. I'll tell you that much. Sally's the only judge. And great cooking does not need to be perfect. It just needs to make you feel happy. It just needs to make you proud. And, you know, this soapbox that I'm standing on today is not because of Valerie Bertinelli. Did I mention I love Valerie Bertinelli? It's this idea that it always comes out perfect. And if you're shooting for that, you are going to be disappointed. You, you need to look at what makes you happy and proud. But this also comes from one of my classes this week. You guys probably know how I teach the, the endless possibilities that come from the nine steps in the basic saute method. You might have seen this class. What I do is I share the nine steps and apply it to making my South of France chicken, and then I change up the ingredients. And we make up a whole bunch of worldwide flavors on the fly. So repeat, reusing the repeatable saute method, I go ahead, I make South of Mexico chicken, then I talk about making south of Italy chicken, south of Hawaii chicken, south of Germany, south of Indonesia. You know, the point is that I use the same method over and over again, but I change the ingredients for an endless number of original dishes. Carefree cooks understand this, right? This is basically our mantra and, and philosophy. And I think this stuff is really, really cool. OK, I've been teaching it for <laughs> a lot of years now, and I hear every day how it changes people's lives. I get emails every day, comments I get every day. But the comment that I got on this class from somebody was this. Just because you put pineapple in it doesn't make it Hawaiian. I had to think about that. Person comments, just because you put pineapple in it doesn't make it Hawaiian. Um... Yeah, it does. <laughs> sure. It's my dish. It's in my kitchen. It makes me proud. I think it's delicious. I think it's fun to make. So you know what? It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to make me happy. And if Sally can call her dish uh, seafood stroganoff, well, then I can call anything that I put pineapple in Hawaiian if I want. Don't let cookbooks 
Don't let celebrity chefs, don't let the food TV and colorful magazines convince you that cooking has to be fancy, that it has to be involved, that it has to be really difficult, and it has to be perfect to have any value to it. It's just not true. I mean, a non-perfect meal that you prepared in your home is more perfect than a perfect meal prepared somewhere else. Huh? I, look, you get what I'm saying. Have fun in the kitchen. Create, experiment, discover, chart your own journey toward becoming a carefree cook. And I'm guessing that not everything's going to be perfect along the way. But maybe the next time you cook, then it just might be. Or the next time after that. Or maybe never. <laughs> but it's the journey that's fun. And since our topic is the non-perfect today, I went scrolling through our Carefree Cooks community to see who is brave enough to share their works in progress, right? Everybody is, loves to share something <laughs> that they think is perfect, but I want to see somebody along the journey. Remember at the beginning of the show, beginning of every show, every Carefree Cooks code we talk about, part of our creed is that we learn every time we cook. So the dish of the week this week starts with Kerry. Kerry made a nice French baguette. We teach my 18, 10, and 2 formula in web cooking classes, but it didn't seal well enough. The seal busted open on the outside. Uh, Kerry says it was still really good. So what do you think is going to happen to Kerry's next loaf? Going to do it the same way, but make sure they seal it up. Kerry learns every time the baking goes on. Anne made a hollandaise sauce yesterday. Uh, Anne wasn't very happy with the results. I agree with you, Anne. Looks a little scrambled eggish in there. Well, you know what Anne did today? The next day, thought about what she did well in her hollandaise sauce and thought about what she could have done better. That's the two questions Carefree Cooks always ask. And look what happened. Um, somebody ate it <laughs> before she could take a picture, but that's a compliment. That sauce looks a lot creamier. No bits of scrambled egg in it. Well done, Anne. Uh, Chris figured something out this week. Chris figured out not to vacuum pack her fresh pasta noodles, uh, but she's back at it today, learning from this and moving forward, making another batch and tossing them in uh, cornmeal and putting them in the freezer, like I suggest. Uh, Michael made a whole bunch of sourdough muffins, but one of his skillets was too hot. I get emails all the time, Chef Todd, my food burned, what should I do? You turn down the heat. <laughs> That's the idea. So Michael learned from the first batch of his English muffins. He turned down the heat. The next batch and progressive batches, that's why I like this picture, progressive batches got better and better and better. And look, it doesn't have to be perfect this time. Maybe it'll be perfect next time. Or maybe it won't be perfect. Maybe it'll never be perfect. But the fun is in the discovery, not in seeking perfection in cooking. It's not the point. Uh, our what am I for this week? Uh, the what am I is magnified 90 times. It is taste buds or tongue. If you said tongue, there's a discussion of beef tongue going on in the Carefree Cooks community today. Um, but this is human tongue uh, magnified 90 times. It's your taste buds. And just to drive the point home even further, let your taste buds tell you when your cooking is perfect and when it's not. And if you thought this video was perfect, uh, like it, please give it thumbs up. Give me some hearts. That way Facebook knows that it's beneficial to people. I don't want to be unbeneficial. I want Facebook to share this with more people. Or you could just cut Facebook out of it. Go ahead and share with your friends and acquaintances uh, from there as well. Because none of this is a magic trick. It doesn't happen overnight. But look, if you can see yourself sometime in the near future empowered with a toolbox, a whole toolbox full of methods that bring out your cooking confidence, the things that allow you to create instead of just cook, I'd like to show you the way. I'd like to be your guide. And my free, immediately downloadable guidebook, The Five Forks to Carefree Cooking, will help you make the decisions at every turn and put you on the right path toward confidence and creativity in the kitchen. Get your own copy right now at fiveforksguide.com. And as Chef Todd Moore reminding you that your cooking does not have to be perfect, but there is a method to your cooking success.
We'll see you next Tuesday, everyone. Bye-bye.